Welcome to another episode of Rough Talk VR, a weekly podcast with in-depth game reviews, exclusive developer interviews, and the latest MetaQuest and virtual reality news. We join our hosts, the father-son team of D. Scruffles and Stratus today, as they spend another episode breaking down and discussing the world of virtual reality. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. We got one that I'm so excited for. Yeah, you've been you've been hyped for the past couple weeks. Yeah, the second I saw that this app came out on the MetaQuest app lab, I was like, man, Niantic, they're exploring the Quest platform. This is huge. So I'm so excited to talk today with Asim, the global product manager for Peridot, a game made by Niantic. So Asim, before I go too crazy with fanboying out about this one, do you mind to introduce uh, yourself to our listeners and tell them what you do over at Niantic? Yeah, more more than happy to. Uh, so so great to to chat with you all today. My name is Asim. Um, I work on our product marketing team. So I lead marketing for Peridot, which is our kind of owned franchise. Um, but I've been with Niantic for a long time. So I joined Niantic uh, kind of fresh out of college, um, and have been working with uh, Niantic over the past eight years. It's actually coming up on my eighth year anniversary this month, and so. Uh, I got my start by working on Pokemon Go and kind of bringing that game to the world. Um, so I joined a few weeks before Pokemon Go launched. Uh, I've contributed to a variety of our other products over the the past few years, but really uh, excited and um, over the past four years, really been focusing on bringing this world of Peridot to life. And we started with that on, on mobile, uh, but we're also looking at, at future AR hardware as well. So your first job out of college was landing at Niantic and working at Pokemon on Pokemon Go. It, it was. I, I I was fortunate enough to kind of have that as my opportunity. Uh, I I've been super like interested in the gaming space for a very very long time. Uh, I'd say like I'm a lifelong gamer. Um, played a lot of Xbox growing up, as I'm sure I'm sure you all have, as as well. Um, and I actually did YouTube for a little while, so I was like a content creator for for a hot minute. Um, but decided really to focus on college versus you know, sticking with a YouTube career. Um, but throughout college, I, I had the opportunity to do a, a variety of fun internships. Um, and the, the summer before um, my senior year of college, I, I worked uh, at Warner Brothers uh, doing an internship on their mobile games publishing team. So that was kind of like my, my first actual uh, footsteps into kind of seeing the business side of, of gaming. Um, and then was was introduced to our CMO and uh, at Niantic and joined, yeah, coming out of college and a few weeks before the Pokemon Go launch. That must have been so huge <laughs> internally when that Pokemon oh, that's Go crazy came out. To even conceive, but yeah, very few games make it into the the daily news cycle and stuff like that, like Pokemon Go did. That was that was huge. So, I mean, it must be pretty rewarding for Niantic that was, you know, interest in AR back when really nobody was to now it's. I mean, you see the global hit that Pokemon Go became. So that's... I, I admit, I tried it when it came out. I had to know. It was actually kind of fun. I didn't get all hooked and like, you know, but the, the audience that it, it had was insane. Yeah. So do you want to tell our listeners a little bit exactly what Peridot is, both with the mobile version and then also with the standalone, you know, mixed reality app, Hello Dot? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. I'd love to actually just start by maybe sharing a little bit about like Niantic and our, our mission, and I'll, I'll weave it into kind of what Peridot is. Um, at Niantic, we're really excited about this kind of like promise of bringing people outdoors. Our slogan is, is kind of like adventures on foot with others, and I kind of break that down into three core tenets. So the first aspect of that is like there's this beautiful world outside, and we want people to go and visit it, explore these amazing locations around the world. And, um, you know, there might be locations in your neighborhood that you don't really know are there or you kind of pass on your daily commute and never really realize. And so we really want to get people excited and exploring their world. And along the way, we'd love for them to get some steps in their day, maybe get a little bit healthier um, and, and hopefully meeting other people along the way and, and making, you know, everlasting friendships. Uh, and so the, the games we build are really anchored around that core mission. Um, and And so... You know, we, we started it out with Ingress and expanded on that with Pokemon Go. And if you're familiar with those games, you're kind of traditionally this avatar on the map. And as you move in the real world, you move in, in the game. But with Peridot, we were kind of inspired by saying like, hey, what if we turn uh, this kind of traditional Niantic game on its head? And instead of 
you being an avatar on a map, we immerse you immediately into the real world. And so with Peridot, it's, it's this idea of this virtual companion, this virtual pet that is with you wherever you want, wherever you are, whenever you want. Um, and so if you're familiar with Tamagotchis or other pet simulation games, have this adorable, cute creature that you can just like take a break from the world, but still be anchored in the world with. Um, and, and you can, you know, pet it, you can feed it, you can play with it, you can go on walks together. And there's other gameplay loops in, in the game as well. You can complete quests and daily tasks when you, you know, go outside on your adventures. There's this whole uh, aspect of like hatching new dots and every single Peridot is 100% genetically unique. They have their own unique DNA code. Uh, and so it's this beautiful kind of sandbox and you get to just discover the, the crazy, wacky, fun uh, creatures that are that are out there, but but really it's anchored as this virtual pet that you can be with and and go out in the world with. And so we launched that on mobile back in 2023, uh, but this past uh, uh, month, uh, a few weeks ago, we decided to kind of bring that to this world of of mixed reality. And so we launched an experience on uh, MetaQuest's App Lab called Hello Dot, uh, and it takes some of those like really amazing, adorable parts of the mobile game. And it brings that to life through uh, the beautiful world of mixed reality. And so you're a hundred percent immersed in, into this world with your dot. You can kind of like really tangibly pick it up and pet it. And there's this really cool gesture where you can summon some food and feed it. Um, and I kind of view that as step one of, of many to come. And so I'm really excited about kind of this expansion of, of the franchise from, from mobile in Tadsa. And I'll say, like, when, when we started Peridot as, as a project, you know, four years ago, we really were building it with this vision of, of future AR hardware and mixed reality devices and true AR glasses to come. Uh, but we wanted to master it for mobile. And so everything that we did was like, how can we learn all these amazing insights? How do we build kind of the best game loops when you're fully immersed in AR for this future where we're, you know, starting to head with these mixed reality devices like MetaQuest and Apple Vision Pro? And, and future platforms to come. So yeah, again, early adopter. So it must be wicked cool for you all to see now that there's this full dedicated hardware that, you know, not only are you looking at the, the pet on your phone, now you actually have it in front of you and play with it with your hands, you know, hand tracking gestures to sell it. It's, it's cool stuff, but you alluded that this is step one. So this wasn't just like a, a quick drop tech demo, just a proof of concept. This is something that you guys are going to continue to grow? Absolutely. I mean, this is where the future is heading. I think like, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing technology transform at, at such a, a incredible pace and advance so quickly. And, you know, future air glasses, they're coming. Like I, I view it as kind of the next, uh, you know, generational shift of technology. You know, if you think back, you know, at, at the different uh, technological shifts over time, you kind of have the, the mini computer, the home computer, the personal computer, laptop, and, and then the internet. And then smartphones is where you really, you know, start to, to, to see all the, these amazing te technology opportunities. Um, but I view augmented reality as kind of that next technological shift. And uh, we, we're building for that. That's what we're most excited about. Uh, and Peridot is the opportunity to, to kind of get our feet wet and experiment and learn and you know Peridot as a team we've always kind of been the experimental team and so we're going to try a lot of things and have a lot of fun and uh, really push the boundaries of what the technology can offer and it's the same people that worked on the mobile app worked on the the hello dot app same team yeah same same team so we're we're this kind of like small but really mighty team uh we're super passionate about this space um, and so the t same team that, that brought you these adorable creatures on, on mobile, where it was, uh, the, the team that brought this experience uh, with hello dot to mixed reality. And, and I'll say like, we're, we're super quick. And if we have a vision, like we're going to push towards it as quickly as possible. And so the, the hello dot experience, we actually built in like literally like eight to 10 weeks, uh, end to end from concept to shipping it on the platform. And so. We're really excited and, and right now we're really in the phase of like, what's next? We feel like we've nailed it. Like you have this adorable pet, it feels, uh, you know, great. You know, players that are experiencing it, like have a really deep emotional connection with it. But the immediate feedback is like, I want more. What can I do more? And so we're, we're kind of in that phase of, of thinking through like, what is the amazing beauty and delight that we can bring to, to this experience? And 
again, as I mentioned, I think we're heading towards this world of like really true AR glasses, ones that you can kind of wear all the time as you're out in the world that you can wear, you know, throughout the day. And we're using this opportunity, this kind of like messy middle to uh, figure out what are like the delightful moments and experiences that you can bring uh, to those types of, of devices. Um, I'm definitely a believer of AR glasses for everyday life. When we were walking around Sweden, I was like, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to put on a pair of glasses and see my path that I need to travel right in front of me without having to look at the phone or anything. That's just such a simple use, but would be majorly useful. So I don't care what capacity. Yeah. Even beyond coming. gaming, you can yeah, see it. For I mean, just, just uh, for why well, that's. That because the gaming life to me is separate than the everyday life. So when you can get the two to merge and, and have a function for your everyday life, you're wearing the glasses. You want to relax, you're wearing the glasses. So I can see that as an option. Mm -hmm. And how, how big is the team working on Paradox? We're, we're a team of, a, I would say, uh, maybe 15 to, to 20 um, that, that are really, you know, focused on, on building um, the, the franchise and expanding the franchise. So. It's not a, a massive team as maybe some other games, um, but we have a lot of, you know, really incredible people that are super passionate and super excited about the space. And, you know, when you have that freedom, this is our own IP. So we can really like the destiny is whatever we want it to be. And, and so when you have that flexibility and that freedom and you have really passionate folks, you can really bring to life magic. And 1520 is not big. That's not a bad number. That's like that magic number mm -hmm. that we talk about all the time. Still tight knit. Yeah. You can still like communicate as people. You don't have to send messages as much, you know? Yeah. Not so many layers of communication. Yes, correct. The we all vibe. There. Like everyone gets along with each other. Everyone trusts each other. It's like such uh, an amazing, um, it's a, such an amazing team to be on. And, you know, when we reflect back and are like, why are we so in love with, with building this game? It, it really comes to the team. It's like. We have good people. We have people that are excited about the space and they trust each other. And when, when you have that, it's like the perfect recipe recipe to innovate and innovate quickly um, and, and try things and like, look, fail fast and, and win fast. So that's kind of how we view it. Well, that's how you get an app like that in eight weeks yes. on, on the app lab store from concept to, to execution. That's, that's huge. And it doesn't sound like the plan is to go kind of one-to-one -one with the mobile app, it sounds like this is going to go its own unique direction. I, th I think so. I, I think like, I'm happy to kind of share, like, I can't say for sure a hundred percent this exact game loops coming to the game, but I'm happy to share like a few, a few thoughts that come to mind and maybe can, can share a little bit of a picture of kind of how we're thinking about it. Uh, the first thing I'll say is, uh, generative AI is like super exciting, uh, and how that can like drive compelling and delightful game experiences. And so we actually tested with that in, in mobile. Uh, and so uh, at the end of last year, uh, in November, we launched this feature where we're leveraging a uh, large language model, uh, Meta's Llama 2, uh, to drive uh, delightful reactions. So, so in the mobile game, uh, we leverage our Lightship platform. And with that, we have this ability to understand the real world at a greater level. When you're walking outside, we leverage real-time mapping to understand you know, what the world looks like and have the creature navigate appropriately. Obstacle occlusion. So if you're walking and, and you pass a tree, your dot can kind of occlude behind the tree. Uh, but semantic segmentation, this idea that we can recognize these real world objects. So if you're at a park, for example, and you see grass, the device can actually determine, hey, that's grass or that's a tree or uh, that's a car. And so when you have this real world understanding at that greater level, imagine being able to then feed that and other information about the creature, like its age or its personality, to a large language model. And then you have this fast library of animation. And so every time your dot sees something, it might have this new delightful reaction each time. So an example of that could be you're at the park and you're passing by flowers. The dot will recognize the flowers and it might say, hmm, those are flowers. I'm going to go up, sniff it, and then maybe just sit back and admire it. And, and so you can have a reaction like that with uh, the power of generative AI. It just makes these creatures, and especially with pets, feel so much more alive. And, and so after that, we were like, okay, this is so amazing. Like, what more can we do? And so we recently, uh, I think in, in Q1 of this year, uh, in March, we launched a, an expansion of that feature. And so we leveraged that same large language model 
Um, but maybe instead of you seeing the real world and the dots reacting to that, maybe you can have a conversation with your dot. And obviously the dot's not going to speak to you in kind of human speech, uh, but it could interpret kind of the input and then have a response or reaction to that. So let's say you ask your dot, hey, do you want to go on a walk? Maybe the dot will get really excited, spin in circles, and then run to the door. And it's like, okay, like, let me grab my shoes. I'm going to go outside on, on a walk. And so like, that's one area where I see like generative AI just making gameplay you know, so much more delightful and feel unique and different kind of every, every time you play with it. Uh, and, and I'd say like we're just scratching the surface. Like those are just a few ideas, but you can imagine when you leverage this technology where that can go and the different ways that you can have uh, generative AI uh, add a little bit of extra delight uh, in, into the gameplay experience. So that, that's like one area that we're like really deeply thinking about. And like I mentioned, started on mobile, but you can imagine how much more delight uh, and, and whimsy that that can bring when you're kind of fully immersed in a mixed reality headset, or even in the future when you're just wearing AR glasses and, and kind of going, going on your day. Uh, but there, there's a ton of other, uh, you know, things I'm happy to, to jump into, but happy to pause here if you had any, <laughs> any questions or, uh, thoughts on that. My, my only thing was hoping that, cause I, I admit I had to be talked into the app. I was like, it's just a demo. I don't want to like get attached to a demo and then I was like, it it's was, not a demo. It's like a, no, you kept selling me on it. You're like, there's no way they did all this. Look at the company that did this. And then finally I got it and I'm like instantly fell in love with my, my, my dot, you know, <laughs> it, was, it just gave it a nice paint job. Everything looks the way I want it, but then I instantly wanted more. So you confirming that there'll be more coming for my experience then yeah, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. And I mean, back to Niantic being cutting edge back when you guys started with Pokemon go, there wasn't really many companies developing games for mm -hmm. AR. No. And I mean, how many game companies are working with llama right now? I, I think that you guys are the first that I've heard of. So I think, you know, no real question on that, but just hats off to just always being cutting edge as a company. I think golf plus used to have an app for reading the greens. If I remember mm -hmm. correctly. If I remember correctly, but that's, you know, that was specific for golf, which they still mm -hmm. have today. But again, another use for the glasses, you know, yeah. where you don't have to have a special device to do it or mm -hmm. so so I'm, I'm excited for the future. So you said there's more, uh, more ideas you guys are bouncing around as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so if, if you're familiar with Niantic, it's like, we want to get people outdoors and with mixed reality devices, I'd say most of them are, you know, indoor experiences right now. I, as I mentioned, I think we'll see that day where we're back outdoors eventually. Uh, but one idea that we're kind of tossing around in our heads is like, is there a way to bring the real world indoors? Uh, and I'm not sure if you all are familiar with this idea of um, 3D mapping, Gaussian splats, photogrammetry. But imagine being able to go out and scan these places or these objects in the real world. And maybe you can bring those indoor in, in some form or fashion. And so that's like another area where it's like, it sounds kind of crazy right now, but like, that's where we're like the experiment, uh, the, the experimental team in us is really shining is like, we just want to push the boundaries as much as we can and see, you know, how far can we push the boundaries of this technology and what is some amazing or fun, delightful moments that you can, can, can bring in from that. And so like, that's another area that really excites me and, you know, it, gives us an opportunity to lean back into that mission of outdoors, even for this period of time where we're indoors with these, these devices. Another way to maybe think about that is this idea of like asymmetric gaming. I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with this, but Im imagine maybe there's something that you can do in the mobile device. And then that's content that when you're indoors and in headset that you can experience in headset and vice versa, things that you're doing in a headset that you can take back outdoors. And so to get to, to your question earlier about like, is this just a standalone experience? Um, maybe, but maybe not. Maybe there is opportunity for there, could, to, for there to be this kind of connected experience back and forth between uh, the mobile app and uh, an experience on a mixed reality device like the MetaQuest 3. So lots of opportunities and, and you know, I'm, I'm really just sharing the inspiration and some of the ideas that we're thinking about. I can't say with 100% certainty <laughs> all of these ideas are coming to, to the experience, but uh, maybe just to give you kind of a glimpse in, into my head and just like some of the conversations that we're ha ha having internally and the types of things we're thinking about. 
Uh, but but really, like our mission as as the Peridot team is like, let's innovate, let's push the boundaries of the technology. We did that on mobile by leveraging our Lightship platform, and now we're like, okay, how can we push the boundaries on on these mixed reality devices? I, I love that you're all thinking future too. It's like everything you're doing today is for stuff in the future that because of technology, you're not already doing. So it's, it's cool to see this unfolding. I, I instantly think to like, imagine if you could open up a, a portal in your mixed, or mixed reality environment that was then the outside environment, right? Like, Hey, your, your, your dots asking to go for your pair of dots asking to go for a walk. So you zoop, open up a portal. It's like a, uh, a photorealistic scan of a, of a park I or something. I love the idea of scanning an outdoor area and being able to bring it into your world. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So much potential with this. And again, you're just ideas, nothing that's guaranteed nope. to come or, or anything like that, but for the, the Peridot community, and I guess maybe even Niantic internally, but what's the, what's the reception been like to, to hello dot? Uh, the, the reception has been, uh, amazing. I'll, I'll share a few, uh, I'll share a story uh, and I'll, I'll speak to the mobile app quickly first, but I, I think the the moment we realized we had something special, we were in an exec review. This was like very early on in the life of Peridot. We were like a couple of concepts on paper. We had a kind of very early playable, um, but one of our execs in that review said, hey, I stopped at my door and then I waited for the dot to walk in before I walked in. And like, that was a moment where it's like, yeah, these creatures are real. Uh, and so you can imagine all the amazing, delightful moments that players over the past year have had on mobile where they have these creatures that to them feel incredibly real that, you know, maybe they lost a pet and Peridot is helping kind of fill that gap for them. Um, or, or maybe they can't have a pet because they have a, an allergy or they live in an environment, you know, where they can't have it. Or maybe they're in college and they had a pet when they were growing up and kind of missed that companionship. And so that's what Peridot uh, to me really offers to the world is this opportunity to have this creature with you whenever you want and wherever you are. And now imagine how that can, can feel when you're in mixed reality, where it, now it is real, when, when you can actually like pick it up and, and feel it. When we were going through um, the development, and it was a short development, like I mentioned, about eight, eight to 10 weeks uh, for, for Hello Dot, we did a variety of, of demos and play tests with our team, but also the the broader company. And like the immediate thing you see when you put someone in the mixed reality ad set and they see this beautiful creature kind of right in front of them is like a smile right under the headset. And it's it's so amazing. And so like, that's always that kind of initial reaction of like, oh my God, this is real. And and, and so we've seen that reception uh, from, from people internally, but also all the players externally that have, have, have tried it out. and. It's, it's very much, uh, you know, exceeded our expectations. And, and like I said, I think this is just step one of this expansion of the franchise to come. And so I'm really excited to continue building and experimenting and, and innovating. And, and to what I mentioned earlier, like all those areas of inspiration are things that we're probably going to explore and, and try out and see what works and what doesn't work. And, and I'm sure there are many, many other ideas to come that, that we haven't even started thinking about yet. I love this overall energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can tell it's legit. It's like the the excitement when you're you're speaking of this is legit. Yeah. And how did the team enjoy working on, you know, the Quest platform with that that mix that full mixed reality environment? Uh, the the Quest is a beautiful device, and I actually I think all of the mixed reality devices and many more to come are are incredible. Uh, but we, we got this opportunity to learn this new platform, to develop for this new platform. A few of the folks on the team have had experience with virtual reality and, and mixed reality to, to some extent, but for, for most of the team, it was really like, let's learn this new platform, let's understand. Um, and, and the amazing things, you know, as you look at the Quest 2 to the Quest 3, it is really this opportunity for mixed reality, for color pass, to, for uh, hand tracking to a level that you can actually just use your hands to engage in the experience. And that's kind of why we decided to fully go for just a hand tracking experience versus using the controllers, because you can have that deeper connection with it. And, you know, to go back for a second, um, you know, one of the the things that that people expressed when they first tried the experience out was like almost this like tingling sensation in their hands where it's like, I almost feel like I am actually petting the dot, even though it's like, 
just this virtual creature that's kind of suspended in, in, in the air through to the mixed reality uh, device. So it's a beautiful platform. Uh, I'm excited to continue experimenting on the platform. And again, I, I think Meta, Meta is a platform that's going to continue to evolve and everything that, that comes to that platform is, is something that we're going to look at and see how it can enhance, you know, the experiences that we built as well. Exactly what he just said is a very common thing I hear about hand tracking game, like uh, feedback that developers get from hand tracking games. Celine Tricart said the same thing about Masters of Light that people didn't even realize that there was no haptics. Yeah. yeah it was a game where you, it's kind of a rhythm based you, fitness your brain game. fills in the. Yeah. But your brain just assumes that there's haptics. It, it, somebody would it's have crazy to tell what you. your brain can do, but that's yeah. how amazing the technology is. Like, it's so advanced that you don't actually realize that you're not feeling this thing, but your brain says, hey, you are, because you're just so immersed in that. I was, I was rubbing my, my dot's head because I was amazed. I'm like, oh shit, I can rub mm -hmm. him. That's wicked cool. He's loving it. So I'm rubbing his head just like you would like a dog or a cat. And in my head, I'm feeling it as well as I'm talking to it. Yeah. I always forget that there's not haptics with the, the hand no. tracking as silly as that is, but you know. And the gestures work spot on. Mm -hmm. And how did the idea for this even come to be? Do you know, to, uh, to go to, to the Quest platform? Yeah, as I mentioned, the, this inspiration of Peridot, again, when we were a concept on paper, was like, we want to build for the future. Uh, and, and that's why it's like, take the Niantic formula, this kind of traditional game where you're this avatar on the map and turn it on its head. So we immerse ourselves fully into augmented reality with the mobile device. But at that time, we knew we wanted to build for headsets. And we needed to wait for the headsets to kind of be at a, at a place where they could kind of offer what we wanted to deliver. And so that's really, I think, the breakthrough point was last year when the Quest 3 shipped and, and you have this really immersive, you know, opportunity to really be engaged in mixed reality where instead of it being black and white, you have color pass through, as I mentioned, where you have really crisp uh, hand tracking. As you look at, you know, platforms like Apple Vision Pro, which also launched, you know, earlier this year, their fidelity is amazing. Like everything you see through that feels like it's in your world even though it's, you know, digitally imposed uh, through the through device. And, and they also similarly have amazing hand tracking. And so, like I said, the, the idea of Peridot was like, let's build for the future, but we want to meet our players on the devices they're on. And so that's why we started with mobile. And again, we wanted to push the boundaries of the technology, but now we're seeing um, these devices start to become um, more prominent. And I, I think over time, there'll be more mass, mass adoption of, devices like the MetaQuest 3, and I see a world in which the Apple Vision Pro or future iterations of it will start to become more, uh, you know, affordable at a, at a price point that most consumers can 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 purchase. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited for that day. And and that's why, why this moment in time is really exciting because we can experiment and, and we can learn and we can have a lot of fun. So that in the day that we do have these you know, mixed reality devices that are more ubiquitous or even that future world where we have true AR glasses that, that everyone is kind of wearing on their face, you'll have this really amazing, delightful experience ready for them. That's awesome. And, you know, we always like to open up the opportunity for our Patreon supporters to submit some questions for our upcoming interviews. So one of our Patreon supporters, Amelia, she wanted to know if there's plans for you to be able to take your dots from the phone app onto the standalone or the, you know, hello dot app kind of an yeah, import and, feature. You know, that's something I kind of alluded to earlier. I can't say that with a hundred percent certainty that it's coming, but you could totally imagine this world of asymmetric game gaming. So the content that you experience on mobile is content you can bring into headset and vice versa. And so we'll see, we're going to experiment and have a lot of fun and, and maybe that's a world in, in which that could happen. Yeah, especially because as you mentioned, you know, people get that nice emotional attachment to their their paradox. So to be able to go from, you know, what you've always seen on the phone app to now being able to, you know, pet the guy with your or the girl. Or just or even the, to feed them. Yeah. Feed them on the go so yep. you don't have to worry about them starving. And, the, and uh, you know, with the full hand tracking, that would be a, a pretty cool experience. And then she also asked if there's plans for other standalone headsets, but you kind of alluded to that with, you know, at least looking at the potential of the Apple Vision Pro. I think, um, you know, we're really excited about the hardware. And like I mentioned, we're just kind of starting to see these devices, 
you know, come to life in, in a real way that have uh, the right technology for you to have this kind of mixed reality immersive experience. Um, and, and so we started by launching on MetaQuest 3 in, in the app lab, um, but we actually uh, have an expansion of the franchise. There's this app called SunnyTune on Apple Vision Pro, and it's this weather app, but we did a partnership with them and they actually have the dot um, kind of in as, as part of their app. And so if you check out SunnyTune on, on the Vision Pro, you'll see, you know, Paradox Mafia Cameo in there. Um, and that's a, you know, beautiful um, platform as well. And so I'm excited, really. It's, it's like, I'm just excited for the classes and headsets to come. And I think there's a lot of opportunity, um, you know, there and more experiences to come. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I think Hello Dot is literally just step one of the expansion expansion of this franchise to come uh, and and so I'm I'm really excited to look at all the opportunities and the technology that future devices offer and see how we can make really delightful experiences on them. I, I love the mission the mission statement more or less. Yeah, I can already see people wanting a, a plushie of their their dot though. Like that, that would be amazing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like this is the one I this is the one I painted. This is what I want it to look like. Because in a I way, mean, that's, I can, oh no, go ahead. I was going to say, like, that's even another area where the franchise could expand, like into merchandise and collectibles, right? Where you've now made these one of a kind creatures that are unique to you and maybe you you want that. So that's also something that I think about a lot. It's obviously a very hard space to get into, um, you know, with, with you know, uh, plushies at scale that are 100% unique to each person. But like, those, those are the things that, that excite me. But sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh no, I'm say. I'm glad to know that you have at least given it some consideration. Or at least the you, idea you, sounds you will, cool. <laughs> you will get an attachment to whatever you're playing with for I don't care who you are, you know. And I see the value of like it could be a comfort animal for some people. When like you said, you lose a pet, you don't necessarily want to run out and get another pet right away because you need to recover from the the loss of your pet. But this or is your a, living situation might not even allow it. Correct. You might not. Yeah, apartment living, you can't have a cat or a dog or whatever the case but you can bring this wherever you go so as well as the workplace which mm -hmm. is nice <laughs> and you know we kind of went right into it with peridot and such but do you want to take us a little bit through your journey at niantic you know you you join a couple weeks later pokemon go mm -hmm. drops but then there's a whole bunch of stuff i'm sure in between you know joining and you know now being you know, a big part of the marketing team and the team as a whole for Peridot. So yeah, do you want to take us a little bit through your journey over at Niantic? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. It's been an exciting journey and and a long eight years, but very fun eight years. And so uh, I, I was able to, to launch, um, you know, Pokemon Go and really be a part of that for several years. And it's just such a beautiful game. I mean, you're, you're bringing this franchise that probably everyone's heard of and most people love to, to the world. And, you know, the... The promise of that franchise was catch them all, right? And and so now you're just like, yeah, you can catch them all in the real world, and you get to go outside and discover, you know, Pokemon ar around you. And so it's really exciting to to work on that game. And as I mentioned, like the mission is adventures on foot with others, and a big part of that is is social and collaborative gameplay. And so one of the things that that you know we like to do at Niantic and we think about is not only just the game experience, but can we deliver these amazing moments? And so uh, I was fortunate to be a part of bringing the you know first few Pokemon Go Fests to the world and, and working with our live events team. But it's like, it's the culmination of the mission. You're taking players to this beautiful location, like a park, and, and I think the first few Pokemon Go Fests we did in, in uh, Chicago, uh, you're taking players to, to these new locations around the world, you're bringing, you know, thousands and thousands of them together. And so live events are, you know, a real big part of what we do at Niantic. And I was fortunate enough to, to be part of uh, some of those for, for titles like Pokemon Go. Um, and over the years, I've been able to contribute to a variety of our other projects that we have. And so if you're not familiar with Niantic, we have a beautiful slate of games that really can, can uh, fulfill the desire of any, you know, target audience. And so... It all started with Ingress, which is kind of the first real world game we brought to the world. Um, kind of this this agent and there's kind of two factions and it's almost kind of like territory control experience. Uh, we, we expanded that with, uh, you know, Pokemon Go. 
But we also have other experiences part of our portfolio. We have a Pikmin title, Pikmin Bloom, and it's this kind of really fun walking experience. You just get the light from uh, walking and getting steps in your day and you get to um, you know, grow these, these beautiful Pikmin and have some fun adventures together. Uh, and then last year we launched a uh, Monster Hunter title uh, and that's available as well. And, and so it's brought the Monster Hunter franchise into, into the mobile uh, device um, with, with that game. And uh, it's a really fun, you know, experience or you can hunt monsters in the real world. And so uh, I've been fortunate enough to maybe not be involved in every single one of those to the same degree I have with Pokemon Go and um, Peridot, but I've been able to contribute to a variety of our experiences over the years. Um, but but really the exciting part for me has been this this most recent project and being able to deliver something totally new and totally different and it's not just like we're bringing a game to the world but like we're bringing this brand new franchise and you get to really have a lot of fun with you know what does the franchise look like and as I mentioned before it's not just the standalone experience it's potentially multiple experiences within the franchise potentially multiple opportunities to expand the franchise and in ways beyond just games. And so that that part to me is is really what's uh, exciting about being on a project like Peridot. And most of those are like, you know, licensed IPs, like even, you know, Monster Hunter, which has quite the cult following. Is Peridot the first in-house IP that you guys have made or is? Ingress would be the the first okay, one. Okay. In Ingress was kind of the, the one that started it all. Um, and so Niantic was um, originally within Google uh, and we spun out in 2015. And so Ingress is something we launched when we were still within Google. Um, and then we spun out as an independent company and and then about several months later, we launched Pokemon Go. But you, it, you kind of alluded to at the start, you know, there's a lot more freedom with, you know, it being an own IP, you know, and all that. Do you, do you prefer to work on something that's kind of in-house created like Peridot? It's really fun to work on all of the experiences that I've I've worked on at Niantic. I would say just that flexibility and freedom to like whatever you can imagine in your head and you can bring to the world with when you have, you know, the IP that you own. Uh, and, and so you have, you know, this amazing uh, opportunity to just dream up and dream big. Uh, and and like I mentioned before, like our mission is let's innovate. And, and so that's the opportunity that Peridot provides. It's this opportunity this kind of sandbox for innovation. You can see how we've already done that on, on mobile and even with mixed reality where, um, you know, we're pushing the boundaries of what the mobile phone can offer with our Lightship platform or we're leveraging generative AI to drive delightful games. You can do that quickly because we, we have the freedom and we have this uh, amazing vision that we want to deliver. And I like that most, it seems like everything really also involves in the big picture, like going outside your walls, getting getting a little stretch now and then going for a walk and having a companion to go with you. It's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. Really pushing the, the social element of gaming. It's not really like a, an, will there ever be a time where if you're walking with your friend and they have the app as well, that you can both share the, like see each other's thoughts. I, I would love, I would love for that. The technology I think will get to a place where that would eventually be possible. Um, you know, for something like that, you need to have like VPS, the visual positioning system, so you can understand uh, to like centimeter degree, like where their creature is in the world and where your creature is. As you can imagine, like maybe there is like you're at a park and, you know, either through the glasses or through the mobile phone, you could see everyone's creatures engaging um, together. So like that's a really exciting opportunity. And and again, like very much aligns with the, this kind of mission, which is social collaborative gameplay experiences. Um, and I'll go back to before, like what you're mentioning, it's just like, it's such a beautiful mission. It's like, we just want people to get outdoors, get a little bit of steps in their day and hopefully meet some other players along the way and discover the beauty of the world that's around them. And, and over the eight years, like been able to see that happen to so many people and, and for a lot of people change their lives. Like in some cases they may be met their partner, significant others you know, playing our games and are now married or in other cases, they've been able to, um, you know, go on walks and just get healthier and lose weight and, and really enjoy the beauty of the outdoors. And so that the mission is exciting for me and, and social is a part of that. 
I think it's like, how can we bring people together? Or how can we bring people together and have a delightful moment together and, and really foster those types of relationships and friendships? And I'll assume everyone that's working in the company all shares the same overall vision and has the same passion as I'm hearing in front of me today, because there's a lot of passion. <laughs> I, and, uh, I think that's like when you have that mission that drives you, yeah, you have that passion and, and like you're making an actual impact to uh, people's lives. And like, that's for me where it was like, it's really like, it's really heartwarming to, to see. And, you know, I'm, I'm very positive on the future of mixed reality and of course VR, XR in general, all the R's, uh, <laughs> but in its current state, you know, were there any limitations or challenges that you all encountered when trying to to work on Hello Dot on the Quest 3 for the first time? I think I think we were fortunate with Hello Dot because we had the mobile game, because we had these learnings over the past uh, year of what can gameplay look like in, in these certain situations. And so for us, it was like, we're kind of, you know, standing on the shoulders of ourselves um, in, in being able to bring Hello Dot to, to the mixed reality platform with, with MetaQuest. Um, and, and so it's like really thinking about, Hey, what are our delightful experiences now that we have these new offerings where you can be a hundred percent immersed, you know, the, the phone is great. You know, it's, it's beautiful that you can have these, uh, adventures that take you outdoors, but the phone is just this small little window into the spatial computing world. The, the, the goggles with the headsets and, and the future air glasses, you'll be a hundred percent immersed in the space. And so the, the challenge for us is like, what's the creativity? Like what, what is the exciting and innovative things that we can bring to the world? And then like, what is it going to take to build that? Because, you know, we are pushing the boundaries of the technology. Uh, we'll, we'll need to see, you know, we can dream up these really big ideas. And in some cases, we'll just need to wait for the technology to, to get to the state where we can actually bring those experiences to life. Um, but it's a really exciting future for me. Um, and, and I'm, I'm really excited where like the, the hardware is heading. I think, like I said before, we're just in this early glimpse of what it can look like, but there's a lot of exciting stuff to come. How many, how many, if you had to speculate and it's pure speculation before you think AR glasses are going to be the norm? It, it's hard to say. And I know you're asking me to speculate. What I will say is I, I think we're um, a few years away from true AR glasses that you can wear outdoors in a suitable form factor that offers this opportunity to kind of wear it in a way that you can wear it all day and have battery life that can support that. Um, but, you know, I think it will still take time from when that device is here to when it is like super ubiquitous and mass adopted. And, and so I, I think like we're probably, as I think about it in like the maybe 2007, 2008 of the smartphone where we're just starting to see these devices come to life. And I'd say probably around, you know, 2014, 2015 is really when we saw the power of those devices and the applications that were built uh, on, on the foundation of, of those devices. And so I'd say like, at least in my head, we're probably kind of like, that would be the analogy in that similar like type of time frame. I would also speculate that AR glasses would replace the current model of cell phone or what we presumed to be a cell phone or a smartphone because there'd be no sense to really have it if you could get everything functioning right in front of your eyes at will. So it's possible, yeah. but I think there's also that transitionary period and, and kind of what I was mentioning before with this idea of like asymmetric gaming, like I imagine there's a world in which the, the phone still provides uh, compelling moments where you, you would use the phone and uh, some form of glasses in conjunction with, with each other as we eventually will, I think, transition to something like glasses that, that really can offer everything to you. And, and I will say, like, um, you know, AR is incredibly exciting. I think when people traditionally think of AR, they just think of this visual layer on the world. Uh, but to me, I think AR means multiple things. It's just this opportunity to augment your world. And at Niantic, the way that I view that is location. You know, you have this understanding of the latitude and longitude for a player you can take them out of the world and they can experience some delight. To me, that's augmented reality. Next step is like, okay, visual. And with Peridot, you kind of can experience that where you're kind of immersed immediately into this visual augmented reality. And you have this true understanding of the world with 
you know, those features I mentioned, like semantic segmentation, where you can understand uh, what the, the phone is seeing, um, but you can uh, have real-time mapping where your creatures can actually like naturally navigate through the world and include behind objects, you know, as it's navigating. Um, so I, I viewed that, you know, as, as a form of AR, but I, I think people don't necessarily think of like audio as well as a form of AR. And so today I would say we probably already do have AR glasses via the, the form of something like the Meta Ray-Bans, which a beautiful device. I purchased one a couple months ago and I <laughs> use it almost every single day. They have amazing um, audio quality. And yeah, they lim they're limited by not having uh, you know visual HUD right now, um, but they're amazing devices. And you can imagine how potentially audio can also drive experiences that take you out in, into the world and to cool, unique places. And so I'd say we already have AR glasses today. The AR glasses that are to come, I think, is, is what really excites me and, and where we can deliver um, an experience that leverages the location, that leverages the, the visual ability to layer over, but also can leverage the audio. Uh, and, and so I think that's the future we're heading towards as we, as we look to where these devices can head. Yeah, no, completely agree. I, I think yeah, I have no, a, I have no argument to any of this. We were kind of talking about it on our on our trip. It all started where we were using the the mini scooters, not the mini scooters, the rental scooters, the public scooters that you can you know the scan ones. with the app. Yeah, the Lime app ones. Riding them all through Sweden, and it started with the Ray Bans. We were like, oh, we wish we had the, these Ray Bans right now. That would be perfect for, you know, filming that adventure. And it led to us talking about you know. The all AR the yeah, yeah all the all the ar uses by the time we're coming home like wouldn't it be cool if we could just see the maps in front of us as we're walking well, you could even and for an audio standpoint if if it was set that it'll take you to a landmark but then you can get kind of like a little history lesson in the landmark you're looking at all while just walking by is you know to me it's limitless yeah so by the end i'm like this is really the new or the next you know technological disruptor like it's going to be huge and uh there's you know, talk about Meta doing full AR glasses with like a neural wristband input by 2030. And I was saying it to you, you're like, you think it's really going to take by 2030? <laughs> uh, but when that drops, that will be freaking huge. Uh, but what are some other kind of real life practical applications that you could see AR being used for? Yeah, that, that's an amazing question. And I was actually was going to mention, like, I... The way that I view augmented reality is that it brings delight into your world, but it doesn't distract you from the beauty of the world. And so it doesn't, in, in the case of something like Peridot, it maybe doesn't always need to just be a game. Maybe you're just going on a walk and you want this companion to, to kind of follow you by your side, but it doesn't need to be this very specific like game loop that I'm doing. Or maybe I'm just sitting at home and, and um, you know, on a streaming platform and I just want something like some companionship and some, some cute creature to hang by my side. And so that's like an, another area. But to everything you were mentioning before, I think it's not just gaming. There's this world in which maybe you just need to navigate to a location that you haven't been to. And you're wearing these glasses and either via uh, visual HUD or audio, it helps you navigate to, to that place. Or maybe you're in the grocery shop and you want to know like, hey, what's the price of this specific item I'm looking at at other places? Am I getting the best value? Like, Potentially, that's a world in which augmented AI devices can help you. Uh, but I, 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 I love the idea of this future of where it's it's actually adding delight, um, and it's not like the scary world where you just see AR ads everywhere. Like I really see this future where it's just delightful, and you're bringing this, you're laying this new world into the real world, but you're still in the real world. And I think that's a point for me is like you still got to be anchored in the world that you understand with some extra delight and moments on it. So uh, to, to what you said before, I, I think the uh, opportunities are really limitless. And so it's really up to the developers to figure out what is the delight that they want to bring to their users. And, and the way that I'm thinking about that, and especially with Peridot, is how can we just bring a little bit uh, of a dopamine hit into your day with these cute creatures by your side? And, you know, working in one of the leading, I guess, cutting edge gaming, mobile gaming companies. Mm -hmm. Do you still game yourself? I know you mentioned at the start that you were a big gaming fan previously. I, uh, I don't game on console as much as I used to. I was like the biggest Halo fan growing up while mm -hmm. all of my friends were playing Call of Duty. That was like one of my go-to 
uh, favorite games. Um, since uh, starting to get immersed into the mobile games industry, I've actually transitioned most of my gaming towards the the mobile device. Um, I've played a handful of games. I'd say like Supercell is probably one of my favorite um, publishers. Uh, I love all of their games. I, I played Boom Beach way back when. It might have been 2015. Um, and I enjoyed that for a bit of time. Um, I got really immersed into to Brawl Stars, which I think they launched in 20, 2018. Um, and they actually recently released uh, another title called Squad Busters. So I've been uh, enjoying that uh, in the spare time that I have. Awesome. And, you know, anything else that you, you have on the plate to ask a sim over here? Well, no, I, I was, look, I, I, he had me at, we're going to continue to look into adding more to, to my dot here so I can, you know. Yeah, I, hate, I, I like to, I, I, I hate to I be had, that guy that as soon as something drops and it's like, give me more, you know, we, we know how hard. No, that was, the whole, work that was and, the whole promise you made to me. We like, if you download it, I promise you, you know, and, and hey, I loved it. And he's, he's my little buddy. Like I said, he looks the way I want. He'll go where I tell him to go. I put out my hand and he jumps right in it. I give him his little head rubbies and mm -hmm. he's a cool dude, but it's like, and feeding him's wicked cool. But it's like I want more, you know? like those same level ups that you see in the yeah. The I mobile had them app. all around my house, going into the rooms. I Dump. throw throw something, throw it outside the barrier of my house, and he'll still get it. Yeah, it, it's funny because I had actually checked out the VR or not the VR, the mixed VR, mix mixed reality version before I checked out the original mobile app, and I was shocked how in depth the mobile app was. You know, you can go obviously level it up feed it you can have Different it scrap it you know fetch food you can play with it you can fetch toys with it there's so, it's it's you can talk to it i love the uh the little interactions that you can do with it it's responsive i talk to mine regardless so seeing the state of the <laughs> the mixed reality version then seeing how in-depth this you know the original mobile app was i was like oh man if this at all gets even half of those features this app is going to be huge so hats off to all of you for Staying up to date with, you know, the, the latest, greatest, and, and what's that's coming just, next. That's just what we're being told. It's, I'm, I'm hearing these minds at work in this studio, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, the stuff that we're not being told that's already in, in the mental works on a whiteboard or something is probably absolutely amazing. Yeah. I really hope this isn't the end of Hello Da. I hope a lot of no, these features can can't be. come over. And, you know, I think that, uh, I don't know. I think it's, it has the potential to be a really big app down the line. So. Thank you so much, Asim, for, for taking the time to join us today. Before we wrap it up, is there anything you wanted to say to the to the listeners? Yeah, just, uh, you know, thanks so much for bringing me on. Uh, I love chatting with you all, and it, it's so exciting to see how excited you are about this space. And uh, I think you can can kind of see the future in the way that I can see the future. It's it's coming. It's like we're just a couple of years away from it. And so, like, I'm really excited to continue to learn and build for that future. Um and, and I hope the viewers are similarly excited about, you know, all the amazing moments we'll have with this technology as, as it comes to life in, in the coming years. But um, thanks again for having me and really enjoyed this conversation and uh, would love to keep listening in and, and watching uh, what you all do in the future. So uh, thanks awesome. for shining a light on this beautiful industry. Awesome. Well, the reality is that, you know, the hardware could be 10 times better than it is now, but if there's not the software to make it great, then it doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. huge props to Niantic for laying that foundation now. So oh, as geez. the hardware comes out, I mean, really, you guys are pushing the software farther than the <laughs> hardware is available. So it's more the hardware is catching up to the software on your end. But, you know, it's it's important that there's companies like that. So hopefully we can get you back on in the future as Hello Dot hopefully grows. And I'm excited to see where the future of it goes. So of course, thank you. Yeah. Thank you again for taking the time. And to the listeners, if you haven't yet, go check out Hello Dot. It's, it's, it's yeah, cute. Yeah, made a believer out of me. Yeah, it's free. Anyone who listened heard me whine for two weeks about it. That yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And then I did it. So I'll eat crow on it all day, though. Yeah, I pushed him. He's adorable. From the start. It's easy. It's free. You know, it's, it's easy to buddy. sell somebody on free. So it's go check buddy. it out. If you like it, go leave them a, a five-star review I'll on the store page. There's a bunch of content. Go with it. You'll leave them, you'll leave them a five-star review on that store page, too, just to help, you know incentivize them to keep growing it and yes, uh please hopefully more to come so check you all later and also subscribe rate us five stars on whatever podcast platform you listen on as well and enjoy the rest of your day take care ciao ciao so much <laughs>